President of today's function, the chairperson of uh, Sri Krishna Institutions of Coimbatore, Srimati S. Malarvi, the guest of honor and uh, who has already enlightened you, Sri K. Annamale, who is a young, dynamic firebrand leader. And we are going to hear a lot about him in the coming days. Not only the entire Tamil Nadu, but the whole of India is having high hopes on him. Sri Adityanji, <coughs> trustee of the Sri Krishna institutions, the faculty of this great institution, the students, young, bright boys and girls who have assembled on this very fine morning. I am extremely privileged and delighted to be here addressing you. This is my first opportunity to come to this institution. But I could make out from the ambience the moment I entered and I came through to this auditorium. The very beautiful way the campus has been created. I am sure the faculty also is definitely providing the best of education and imparting the best of knowledge to all of you who are looking forward for a very good career in the coming days. Now before I enter into the topic, I consider that uh, Sri Annamalaji has mentioned in his speech the role India had in the past, starting from centuries ago. So I will be taking it to the, in the natural way of taking it further ahead. India was a Vishwa Guru, a global leader. And now, under the Prime Ministership of Sri Narendra Modi ji, how India is trying to regain that global leadership. After almost eight, nine centuries of having to undergo the foreign rule, having to live under a foreign uh, dynasties, foreign rules, India lost that place and in 1947 onwards after we gained independence India have been trying to come up to regain that and now we are fortunate that we are in the 75th year of India's independence we are in the ninth year of Sri Narendra Modi ji's leadership and I consider that the effort that was started, initiated in 1947 that has reached a very crucial phase where we now we are now the fifth largest economy in the world maybe in a couple of day, uh, years we aim to be the third largest economy in the world and further progress to be the global leader. Sri Annamalai mentioned about the unicorns, about the startup ecosystem. We now have the third best largest startup ecosystem in the whole world. And definitely, the young boys and girls who are sitting in front of me, I am sure that you will be taking that startup ecosystem, taking the country to its pinnacle of glory in the coming days, as per the and on the basis of the inspired by the leadership of Sri Narendra Modi ji, our Prime Minister. So friends, as I mentioned to you, we are in a monumental location which coincides India's 75th year of independence with 
eight years of governance of Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji. We now know that Sri Anna Malaji mentioned that I specifically takes care of the African and the Middle East countries in the Ministry of External Affairs. Beyond that, I have been also given the responsibility of overseas Indian affairs across the world. So I deal with not only students, I deal with every Indian who lives abroad, be it a non-resident Indian who, who has an Indian passport or somebody who has gone some 400, 500 years ago to some other part of the world who consider themselves to be a person of Indian origin. Now, we have in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs a policy that when somebody is to be given or has to be considered as a person of Indian origin, we look at four generations. Recently, I had a new experience. I went to Reunion Islands, which is a French territory. And Reunion Islands have a lot of people who went from Tamil Nadu as indentured labor, who were shipped there to work in the sugarcane fields there. But they went almost six generations ago. And their request to me was, can you amend the rules to consider our, us also as people of Indian origin? And I consider that as one of the biggest achievements of Narendra Modi ji's government. When people who went the six generations ago never thought that I should be considered as a person of Indian origin, but now they feel I should be, I should have my linkage with India should be established, should be certified. I need to be part of India's growth story. I need to be part of the country that is developing, that, is, that will become a developed India. So that in nutshell, I would say that is the change that has happened during the last eight years of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government. And now when an adverse situation arises, the government of India has been making efforts and every Indian living anywhere in the world, they feel that the government will leave no stone unturned to protect them. We have seen many such instances in the recent past. During the last two and a half years, we have undergone through a pandemic, a global pandemic, we have undergone through a perhaps a prolonged war situation which in the recent days has not happened at all. The war in Ukraine between Russia and Ukraine. And during these periods the government ensured the safe evacuation of hundreds of stranded Indians. And during the same period we saw the situation in Afghanistan, where there were not only Indians, but there were people of Indian origin living there, who wanted, who didn't want to continue to live there when the Taliban took over Afghanistan. So, the evacuation of stranded Indians in Afghanistan in the name of Operation Devi Shakti, the Evacuation of students from Ukraine in the name of Operation Ganga and then during the pandemic the Vande Bharat mission. All three operations and if I mention Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji's 2014 when he took over immediately after that the Operation Rahat in Yemen. All these have now conclusively proved that government of India can take care of the people of Indian origin, people of Indian citizens anywhere in the world in whatever situation they are. So it has not been an easy task. 
it has been overcoming logistical hurdles to using diplomatic channels and narendra modi ji's government has consistently gone to great length to ensure the safety of indians abroad in difficult situations now the global indian diaspora knows that modi government will stand for them especially during the during the time of crisis as i mentioned the operation rahat or the operation ganga these two were undertaken in war situations they were not just operations they were obtaining safe passages maintaining ties with countries that are at lower heads there was russia on the one hand ukraine on the other hand so we need to maintain a balance and we need to uh, have the maintain the ties with those countries ensuring a cease fire when required and also getting citizens back with zero casualties we have the experience of bringing back indians in different situations but rescuing with minimum collateral overcoming all international challenges is what the narendra modi government has done seamlessly whenever indians abroad needed help from their home country india in uh, ukraine launched the operation ganga we not only evacuated indian citizens but also foreign nationals some of the newspapers have reported that the tricolor gave them the security and safety many of the foreign nationals they took a tricolor around their hands because that tricolor will give them the security in a war like situation between february 1st and 11th march 2022 over 22000 indian nationals mostly students returned to india from ukraine from late night meetings to sending over cabinet ministers to oversee operations from neighboring countries the prime minister's leadership has ensured everything we brought back nationals who crossed over from ukraine to romania poland hungary slovakia and moldova through the land border transit exits the most challenging part of the evacuation exercise was that of evacuating indian students who were in the bunkers for more than 2 to 3 weeks in kharkiv and sumy which is on the eastern border of ukraine and they had to be taken to the western border traveling almost 16 to 20 km 20 hours and both the places were witnessing heavy shelling and air strikes we were simultaneously trying to explore explore various means of bringing them out and the sumi evacuation which was the last one on a significant scale was also extremely complex as our students faced the prospect of facing caught in a crossfire their evacuation from the city needed a credible cease fire a daunting challenge in the then situation and this finally materialized due to the personal intervention of the prime minister himself with the presidents of ukraine and russia president zelensky as well as president putin indian air force was sent to evacuate indian students 19 flights were operated the prime minister also spoke to personally to the students who came back again operation ganga that is a testimony of our test commitment to ensure that city indians in distress situations abroad can count on their government we have shown this on numerous occasions before but rarely in one as challenging as the ongoing conflict in ukraine the prime minister intervened as i mentioned and spoke to the leadership of ukraine to the leadership of russia and to the leadership of united states of america and it was his stature and the respect he commands among the global leadership that ensured the safe evacuation of students from war torn ukraine 
There are several students of Tamil Nadu with whom I had the opportunity to interact yesterday in Madurai. They were extremely happy. They were, I was really delighted to hear them. Personally thank Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji for his efforts in bringing back every one of them. Friends, it all started in 2014 when the government take over, took over and in 2015 March April the situation in Yemen was turning out to be something very difficult. We had around 6,000 Indian nationals who were there in Yemen and which included around 4,600 Indian nationals and around 1,000 foreign nationals who wanted to be brought back. There was a baby as old as only six days, just born. There was somebody who were, who were people who were in their 90s and the arrangements that were being made, it was personally frequently reviewed by Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji. An inter-ministerial standing committee was done. I, incidentally, I want to tell you. See, earlier days when the government of India functioned, they were functioning in silos. Means each ministry will function on its own. The other ministry wouldn't know what this ministry is doing. We experience that frequently even on our roads. The road building, PWD does the good road. Next day the telephone people will come and dig it up. And then the road is gone. We experience that. It happens because the inter-ministerial coordination. Lack of inter-ministerial coordination. Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji has been right from the day of his taking over as Prime Minister. He has been ensuring that there is the whole of government approach. The government should not work in silos. It should work with a whole of government approach. That's why when you, you might have seen the ministers who went to the, during the Ukraine crisis, none of them were for, from the Foreign Affairs Ministry, External Affairs Ministry. We had the Civil Aviation Ministry, Mr. Sri Jyoti Raditya Sindhya going there. We had VK Singh, General VK Singh, who is an army general, who has the experience of bringing back personally, he went to Yemen and brought back, you have seen the videos of him in YouTube, flying back in the Indian Air Force plane along with the evacuated Indian nationals. So like that, he at present takes care of the Ministry of Road Transport and Highways. But the Prime Minister ensured that the ministers, whether they look after civil aviation, they look after uh, road building, but when an issue of Indian nationals come, we should be one. The government should function unitedly. So this all started from 2015 itself. During Yemen crisis also, such an inter-ministerial standing group for the repatriation of Indian nationals abroad was created. And then ultimately, once the then Foreign Minister, External Affairs Minister Sushmaji, she mentioned everything preparation was done, but the war was going on. And then uh, how do we evacuate them when the war is going on? Sushmaji requested the Prime Minister and then call, phone call from Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji to the King of Saudi Arabia in 2015. That turned out to be the decisive game challenger, changer and facilitated the massive evacuation of Indians and foreign stranded persons in war torn Yemen. Operation Devi Shakti is another example. 669 persons were evacuated in the month of August and uh, including 438 Indians. We also provided, we have been, see, regarding Afghanistan, we consider, we don't, we have not, we consider that the dispensation that has come to power there, 
We don't agree with them. We have lot of difference. We have a lot of disagreements with them. But our relationship with the citizens of Afghanistan, with the citizens of Afghanistan, that is historical. That is centuries old. That is why India has been providing medicines. India has been providing materials for their food requirements. For various such things, we don't consider who is in power then. Our connection is people to people. And that is the policy that the Prime Minister has adopted in our neighborhood first policy. And in our, in our neighborhood first policy, you got a symbolic glimpse of that when Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji took over as Prime Minister in 2014. When he took the oath in the Rashtrapati Bhavan, in the grounds of Rashtrapati Bhavan, we had the heads of governments, the heads of states to witness that oath taking from our neighboring countries. All the neighboring countries were represented in the first time in the history of independent India. A Prime Minister of India took the oath of Prime Ministership in the presence of all the neighboring countries, heads of states or heads of government. You can, there is a saying that you can choose your friends, but you cannot choose your neighbors. So your neighbors are already there. You need to have a friendly relationship, friendly engagement. And when, if, even if you don't go on the same page with the government there, you can differentiate between, you can find a, you can continue the relationship with the people of that country the citizens of that country and in the recent incidents in uh, Sri Lanka that country is in a turmoil we know that we have been going through the newspaper reports but our neighborhood first policy that has provided regular assistance to Sri Lanka in its fight against the ongoing economic crisis we have been providing assistance, financial assistance, the assistance to ensure energy security for the, regarding in the case of fuel, we provided uh, medicines, food materials, commodities like rice, red chilies, sugar, wheat flour, I don't want to give the details of what, what date we gave for them, how much we gave. We also saw to it that these supplies that we provide, it reaches in a balanced way to every section of the Sri Lankan population including the Tamil speaking Sri Lankan citizens. We recreated or I can say reconstructed the Jaffna library, the Jaffna airport and also the the Jaffna cultural center a signature Jaffna cultural center in Jaffna that was constructed by India's financial assistance. The renovation of hospitals, renovation of schools and 50,000 massive housing projects basically meant for the Tamil speaking people of Sri Lanka. That was the special assistance that India provided for the Sri Lankan citizens. The fishermen, Indian fishermen, basically mainly from Tamil Nadu, they sometimes cross over the international border 
between maritime border between India and Sri Lanka inadvertently, unknowingly. And there are occasions when when they cross over, the Sri Lankan forces, the Coast Guard has been taking them into custody. During the last eight years, we have brought back almost 3,000 Tamil fishermen who unknowingly crossed over to the crossed over the maritime border and reached the into the waters of Sri Lanka. And at the present moment, I can proudly say that there are no Tamil Nadu fishermen in Sri Lanka at this point of time. So this is our neighborhood policy is not only maintaining diplomatic relationship with the neighboring countries. It is ensuring the safety. It is ensuring better living conditions. It is ensuring better infrastructure. Linkages between India and other neighboring countries, be it in Myanmar, be it in Bangladesh, be it in Nepal. We have now trains running, originating from India, going to Bangladesh. We have road transport, we have cargo movement, which originates from India and moves over to our neighboring countries be it Nepal, be it Bhutan, be it Myanmar or Bangladesh. We had a policy of look east. When Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji came to power as the Prime Minister, he changed that look east into act east. He said that looking is not enough. We need to act. And that act east policy which takes care of the Southeast Asian countries, be it Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, all these countries, the relationship with them, that is now turning into not just diplomatic relationship, it is turning into an economic relationship. And how it helps? It helps in the development of our Northeastern region. So now the Northeast has a relationship, economic relationship. The products manufactured in our Northeastern states, those Northeastern states products, it goes, be it flowers, be it artifacts, all these materials, it travels, it is sent as cargo to the East of India, countries in the East of India. So our neighborhood policy, our act is policy and we consider the Middle East as our extended neighborhood. Thousands and thousands, millions of Indians including from Tamil Nadu and Kerala, they go to Middle Eastern countries to earn a livelihood. And in the Middle East, the Prime Minister visited Middle East. The first time in 34 years, the last Prime Minister who went to Middle East had gone 34 years ago, in the 80s. For the last three and a half decades, no Prime Minister has visited any country of Middle East. And he ensured that his visit he is not limited to engaging with the leadership of that country the ministers of that country, the rulers of that country, but interacting with the ordinary labor class people who live in the labor camps. He went there, he ate, sat with them, had food with them. Many of those who had the opportunity to be on the same table, who earned, who went there to earn their daily bread. Some of them I had the opportunity to interact in Kerala. They told me that we have never dreamt when I went to Middle East, to Dubai, that I'll be having food with the Prime Minister of India. In my dreams I have not thought of. But I had the opportunity, not only in India, but in a country where I had gone for earning a livelihood, I could eat 
with the prime minister share the food along with the prime minister so what more should i dream of what should more should i think of aim more so that was that is the foreign policy change doesn't happen only at the diplomatic level we have we had our foreign policy right from the beginning 47 but now our foreign policy has a symbiotic relationship with our domestic requirements that is why the sri lankan tamils are taken care of that is why we build infrastructure develop the infrastructure with our neighboring countries so our domestic requirements our foreign policy is not on the dictated by the requirements of people who are not connected with the ground realities of india instead it is dictated by the requirements of india the people of india the citizens of india and now when i look at that situation we have changed many of the definitions also many definitions have undergone changes anna malai ji was mentioning about the the, the period when he was studying 49 out of 60 students who were his classmates are abroad they didn't have an opportunity for them here those days people used to go there and we rightly told that uh, we mentioned when i was in college we used to say it is a brain drain that people who get educated in india going abroad but i won't find fault with them because they felt because the opportunities were limited in india to earn a better living they had to go abroad but now the situation is changing situation is changing he mentioned about the unicorns 7500 crore that is 1 billion dollar 7500 crore worth of startups more than 100 startups they have not been created by people with a pedigree they have not been created by people who got educated in the best of institutions of the country they have not all come out through the iits they have come from ordinary backgrounds people who came from rural background the other day i had an opportunity to, to talk to mr baiju many of you have heard the baiju's app he is a son of a school teacher he lives in kannur not in the within the corporation of kannur kannur is the northern part of kerala he has not had his education in kochin or trivandrum he had his education in kannur his father was a school teacher he earned he started his life as a parallel college teacher means a tuition teacher and he came up because the prime the under the new india in the new india a talented youth who has the entrepreneurial qualities the risk taking mentality who has the confidence that there is a government in india which will take care of me and i can venture out and such persons and even if i don't have anything for me i don't have a fatty bank balance but still i can try for my entrepreneurship on the basis of the support provided by the government support provided by our financial institutions and he went ahead he is one of the most successful the new generation entrepreneurs that has come up in the recent times so i am just quoting one example i can quote dozens of such examples so now we have more opportunities but it doesn't mean i will not tell you recently i was in uh, los angeles i went to the southern california university of southern california around 3000 indian students are there i had the opportunity to interact with them address them 
So I told them, I am not asking you, all of you, to come back to India. I will not ask that. Because many of you have come here to live in US, to be successful in US. But when you become successful in US, I am confident that you will have India in your hearts. As long as India, you have India in your hearts, it doesn't matter for me whether you live within the boundaries of India or you live outside the boundaries of India. Because we consider now our outlook of the whole world has undergone a change. The world is shrinking. But there is a definition for the world. People say the world is a market. That is the new terminology. The world is a market. And everybody is trying to market their products. We consider the world not only as a market, but as a workplace where talented Indians can go anywhere in the world, prove their metal, prove their capabilities, and can become leaders in those countries. We have such leaders in Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley is well known. We have leaders who have capacity, who have the capability, who have proved their metal in difficult situations in every part of the world, in technology, in medicine, in arts, in literature, not only this, even in governance. I went to Houston recently. I met four mayors who were from Kerala. Four mayors in that state from Kerala. Perhaps there may be more such people from Tamil Nadu also. Who are mayors. So they are there in governance. And it is not only Indians who vote for them. It is the Americans who vote. And American means American citizens who have come from Africa, who have come from Latin America, who have come from Asia, who have come from Europe. But they vote for an Indian. And Indian becomes the leader of the whole world. America is known as the melting pot where various civilizations come together and come together and melt and build one single, they come to as a single entity. In New York City, I could meet two members of their state legislature who are from India. New York, New York state legislature. So Indians are excelling themselves. And when Indians are excelling themselves, I won't tell that all of you come back here. You be there, whoever want to go, whoever feels that for the opportunities, better opportunities, I would like to go there. But we consider them as our living bridges. That is our bridge of India with the outside world. Prime Minister has mentioned, Prime Minister sees Every Indian who lives abroad, the Indian diaspora, as a living bridge, is a live bridge which ensures India's link with the world. When required, they can do what is required to be done for the welfare of Indians. So all efforts of the, of under Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji, he used to personally tell me, ensure that your visits abroad are not limited to diplomatic engagements. Ensure that your visits abroad are not limited to interactions with the leaders of the leadership of that country, the rulers of that country. Every visit, you ensure that you meet the Indian citizens there, Indian community there. So you might have seen, recently I was in Malawi and Zimbabwe. I went to an Indian temple founded 150 years ago. Nobody had thought that, nobody could recall that they, some of them told me that you are the first minister to visit our temple. Because we consider that the cultural ethos of the country, 
We need not to be ashamed that I represent India. So this is a temple. Why should I go there? That is the Indian community trying to maintain its culture, its heritage. Even after living abroad for 150 years, none of those who were there, who went originally from Gujarat to Harare, none of them are Indian citizens now. They have a Zimbabwean passport. But they maintain a temple. This is the situation. This is the peculiarity. This is the change that is happening across the world. So, India's diplomacy under Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji, India's foreign policy under Narendra Modi ji, that has undergone a great transformation. And that transformation is India is now considered every Indian, every Indian diaspora, member of the Indian diaspora is proud of his linkage with India. Every foreign national, people are telling me in informal interactions, when five or ten people gather together and there is an Indian, then they used to, earlier they used to, they were not giving any attention to us, but now, Oh, you are an Indian. You are from Modi's India. That is how the foreigners, the people of other countries now have started looking at India. And my dear young friends, I consider all of you as citizens who are living in a very significant period of India's history. You are privileged to be living. You are privileged to be getting educated during this period of India's history. And what is that significance? We are living in the 75th year of India's independence. 75th year of India's independence. And last year during the Independence Day address, the Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji gave a clarion call. He said that when I took over as the Prime Minister, I have been telling that this government functions on the basis of three principles. Sabka Saad, Sabka Vikas, Sabka Vishwas. Along with everybody, taking everyone together for the development of everyone and with the trust of everyone. But now he said that we are in the 75th year. We should have a target of the next 25 years. And after 25 years, when India reaches 2047, and I'm sure that all of my young friends who are sitting in front of me, you are going to see that 100th year of India's independence. And when we reach that milestone, India has to be the global leader. We should, India has to be that global leader. So the next 25 years, is going to be the transformational age for India. The age of transformation, the era of transformation. India growing from an economy at the fifth rank to an economy at the first rank. An India, a new India, a modern India, which will be the global leader, which Anna Malaji mentioned that India was a Vishwa Guru. Vishnu Guru, in English I will translate it as global leader. To become the global leader, regain that global leadership. But that will not happen only by the efforts of the government. That is what he said. Prime Minister said, so I am adding one more word for the, as the guiding principle of this government. Along with Sabka Saad, Sabka Vikas, Sabka Vishwas, I would say Sabka Prayas. Effort of all. So friends, those who are sitting in front of me, you are going to be the partners, you are going to be the partners in that development growth story of India. The transformational growth story, the transformational story of India of the coming 25 years and taking India to the pinnacle of glory to become the world leader it will be along with the government's efforts, our efforts, 
the efforts of every Indian citizen. That counts. And I am sure that institutions like Sri Krishna College of Engineering and Technology, which will provide the best of education and knowledge, which will impart such living the 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 means of living to you which will impart that that will definitely ensure you to take that role to take part in that effort fulfill that role and let I pray almighty just before I came in I prayed at the Sri Krishna temple very ex exquisitely done Sri Krishna temple so I pray Lord Krishna to give you strength to become part to play the role of the transformational age to be partners in that transformational story of India's growth to be India's transformation to be the global leader with these words let me conclude Namaskaram to all of you